Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Behind the Scenes at NASA webinar. We're going to wait about 30 seconds to allow you all to enter the webinar, and then we'll kick start. Speak soon. Hello everybody and welcome to the Behind the Scenes at NASA Launching an Organic Media Empire webinar. For today's webinar, we have two expert leaders joining us to share their knowledge and answer your questions. During the webinar, please do send your questions to us using the chat box on your screen. We want to ensure that this discussion is as interactive as possible and do take advantage of this opportunity to get answers to your burning questions. Before I introduce our panelists, I would like to quickly note that this webinar is in association with our Brand Marketing Summit New York on October the 24th to 25th. We'll have over 400 marketers coming together to discuss everything from content and storytelling to omni-channel integration, personalization, and attribution insights. I will be sharing further details about this after the webinar, where you can also meet Opal, who are presenting today. So to begin, I'm going to introduce, we have two fantastic speakers from NASA and Opal, but I'm going to head straight over to Brian Rhodes, who will make the introductions himself and kickstart our webinar. Brian, over to you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, welcome, everybody, to um, – see if I can get my slide to uh, advance there. And wel welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm really excited to be here today, and, and thank you so much for joining. Um, today we're going behind the scenes with NASA, and over the next 45 minutes we will look at some of the programs and missions, but also get a better understanding of the storytelling that goes on at NASA, communications at NASA, what it's like to work there, how are they structured, and what's the amount of work being, uh, being done to bring those stories to life across media, across channels and are really across the screens through which we uh, view the world and, and nowadays the universe. So I'm Brian Rhodes with Opal and I'm thrilled to be joined here today with Ashley Edwards from NASA. Ashley is a communications integration manager at NASA HQ and Ashley, you run a team of NASA communicators, your team, the Human Spaceflight Communications Team. Have I got that right? Sure do. Awesome. Well, um, and I know we're going to get into this uh, quite a bit, uh, but your team is responsible for uh, human spaceflight. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. Cool. Cool. And I'm I'm Brian Rhodes with Opal again, and I'm going to help us move along here today. Um, but let's let's start today by talking about the work itself, the visual work, the work we read, the work we see those images and those videos we watch online. And I, I found this image of Saturn um, just the other day. And, and when I was finding this image, I, I realized that it was the last full ring image taken by Cassini before its big plunge in, into Saturn last week, for those of you uh, watching that story unfold. And, I, and I, I'm using it because it's, it's stunning, first of all. Um, it doesn't even look real, and I really hope it, it comes through in full resolution on, on the webcast. Um, but it's really just a small example of the work um, that's being done at NASA. And it's, it's the work from the engineers to the scientists to the administrators, uh, and it's always, always world class. But how do we, how does, how does the general public, how do we know about all of this work? How am I, just as the normal global citizen, how am I able to follow and learn about these missions? Well, we can thank teams of NASA communicators, uh, teams like, like Ashley and her team and others like them that, that create and produce the animations we love, the mind-blowing Hubble images, and those videos of high-fiving NASA controllers. We know about these incredible missions through storytellers, through the storytellers of, of the NASA communications team. And 
as we started to put this webinar together, I got to work more closely with Ashley and her team. And in, in one of our sessions, she shared her team's mission statement. And it, not to steal her thunder here, but it really struck a chord with me. And it's, it's simply put to connect the world to America's space program. Uh, it's simple, it's clear, it's very noble, and it's, and it's honestly one of the best examples I've seen uh, of a mission statement, frankly, for its clarity and its, and its simplicity. But the mission statement is, is simple, uh, yet there's nothing simple about the NASA missions themselves. NASA missions are complex, um, but the simplicity of, this, of the team's mission statement also hides the complexity of the storyteller's mission. Uh, the challenges of campaign strategy, plotting out narratives, capturing those missions, and then really producing the world-class content uh, that we've come to expect from NASA. Uh, and really just notice the Journey to Mars graphic here that I've shared. It's, it's telling the NASA story, uh, but this too, as you can tell, is a very complex story uh, to unpackage and, and tell. So complexity, let's focus on that word for just a moment longer, complexity. Increasing complexity is all around us, not only for the, the engineers at NASA, but for all of us in the work that we do uh, each and every day. And, and part of my role at Opal is to study and research the complexity facing Opal's customers, customers like NASA, and then work with those customers uh, to better manage their complexity. So real quickly, I've got a, a, a demonstration here that I think a lot of you will, will resonate with. And it's, and it's, it's essentially the complexity of a, of, a, of a business having needs and wanting to manifest those needs out into, into brand experiences to bring those, those, those business goals to market. And, and normally how you do this is you hire marketers. You hire marketers, you hire communica communicators, and you have them translate those business needs into those brand experiences. Uh, and another step that you also do is you, you put them into their roles, right? You put them into their, into their regional teams, their, their creative teams, et cetera, and you, you kick off this process with uh, communicating those needs to, to one of your teams, and so far so good. It cascades from there. They're sharing the brief. Um, no problems thus far. It hits a little bit of a snag with, with what we'll call our friend Bob here, but Bob's overworked and he's essentially harm, harmless and we'll just continue the process going until we, we reach Team C at the end. And Team C is upset because we missed their sister organization, Team D. Uh, meanwhile, the, the business just sent through a, a change order request uh, on, that, on that brief. It lights up the organization again. Our, team, our friends in Team D are still upset uh, that cascades through uh, and ripples through the, the organization. We finally update the business. The business isn't happy with what we've produced, and the process happens over again. And really what happens here is the brand experience and the ultimate business strategy suffers uh, because of this complexity. Let me look at this one quick other way here before we get to, 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 Nash, uh, to Ashley. Um, Let's break this down and look at the volume. And it's trying to manage things um, going on at once. And it used to be um, we had one channel, we had one uh, campaign in market, we had one audience, uh, and it was a, we were able to manage uh, that time and that volume of, of work uh, accordingly. Today, however, we have multiple channels, multiple stories, multiple campaigns, and multiple audiences, which really leads to the fragmentation of attention. Another way to break this down is trying to stay organized and creative uh, through the process here with your documents, with your spreadsheets, with your PSD creative files, with PowerPoints, et cetera. Uh, and all of these documents are unrelated, they're fragmented, and it's, it's awfully difficult, as we know, to stay uh, motivated, organized, and creative through this process. And then finally, it's, it's the process itself, and it's staying aligned with with your other teams that are across your organization. Um, and it's you know, developing micro briefs and, and mini briefs to, to develop ultimately these, these other user experiences, whether it's your mobile app, whether it's your website, your social channels, uh, et cetera. And this is painful and dangerous because it's, it's tough to stay aligned in this, in this environment with this process. 
So this is why you're suffering. It's the time, it's the work, and it's the process uh, that a lot of us in marketing are going through. Um, so now imagine if there, if there was a visual platform designed for marketers, and this is Opal, and this is how marketing gets done. Opal is a visual collaboration platform, purpose-built for marketers. You're gonna see more of this with Ashley's demonstration here, but it's really how some of the best brands in the world are orchestrating uh, and, and running their, their modern brands. So with that, let's pass the baton and let's, let's get over and see how NASA uh, is, is accomplishing a lot of their tasks uh, and how Ashley is, is going to market and running her team with just some of the incredible stories, Ashley, that, that your team puts together. Um, Ashley, welcome to the webinar, and we're going to pass uh, the screen over to you, and you can you can start your presentation, please. Thanks so much, Brian. Um, I'm just wondering if you can see my screen now. I think I accepted it. want to make sure I did. Yeah, we're all good to go, Ashley. You're good to go? Okay, great. Well, because Brian and I handed off with the same NASA symbol, we wanted to just make sure. So I'm so happy to be here. My name is Ashley Edwards, and I'm the Communications Integration Manager for Human Space Operations. Um, I'm here at NASA headquarters in Washington, D.C., and as I said, I'm just absolutely thrilled to be here today with you. Um, let me advance my slides here. So the first thing I wanted to share with you is really what the vision is for my agency, because I truly believe that any communications has to start with a firm understanding of, of who you are, your corporate, or in my case, you know, federal agency, um, your vision. And so for us, for NASA, our vision is to reach new heights and reveal the unknown for the benefit of all humankind. And what we always talk about is if you can't if you can't figure out that something that you're working on fits in at least one of these categories, you're probably not working on the right thing. So um, for us, this is really all encompassing and we always want to make sure that we're pushing the boundaries, that we're learning something new and that we're making sure to bring it to to humankind in general. Um, more specifically for my particular team and Brian touched on this, my team, our mission statement for our group is to connect you to America's space program. We want it to be something that you understand, that you can feel a part of, and especially for the U.S. citizens, I mean, they're the taxpayers, they, they pay for this program. We need to be transparent and make sure that they understand what we're doing with their, um, with their money, with their investment, and that we um, share um, the ups and the downs with them. Specifically, um, with regard to human space flight, our goal in space exploration is to expand human presence deeper into the solar system, and we feel like our role at NASA is to help lead this effort. It sounds like a lot of motherhood and apple pie statements um, at the beginning with our vision and then our team's core mission and then the, the purpose statement for our organization. But I find that it's very important to be grounded in these areas because that's going to help you set the tone for all of your communications activities. And when you're in a limited resource environment, as we always are, um, it helps us uh, prioritize and you know what is actually really fitting our agency priorities, our vision statement, and what's doing getting us the most bang for our buck for the taxpayer's dollar um, with regard to connecting them to the space program. Um, the good news is we have some of the best shareable moments on and off the earth. We don't have a, um, we don't have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what to talk about. We're, the, the content is amazing. It's one of the best jobs in the world because of that. Every day we're doing something that just kind of blows our mind. And so to be in a position where we're constantly communicating about these it, it's it's nice when you've got a subject matter that um, that is exciting this particular picture right here it always gets incredible engagement it doesn't matter how many times we show it um, and this is uh, Bruce McCandless um, he's doing the first untethered space walk and this happened in 1984 um, but people still get pretty inspired by it um, but it is complicated 
Here within NASA, we have four mission directorates, um, and that's aeronautics, science, space technology, and human spaceflight. We do the, I'm in the human space exploration organization. I'm not gonna go through all of this, but there are 10 centers. There are, each of these centers have multiple programs. Each of the programs have multiple projects. We have partners in the US, abroad. Some of them are international. We have industrial partners, um, and we've got a lot of partnerships with the new space. Um, emerging like Orbital and SpaceX, um, and Sierra Nevada, Blue Origins, those are all very exciting to us. And we have audiences spanning all ages all over the world. So it's um, we always say the struggle is real with regard to how complicated it is for us to get aligned. Um, one of the things that I was asked to talk about is kind of what keeps me up at night, and that's easy. It's integration. Um, it is the key. It is our goal. It definitely keeps me up all night. However, when we do it right, it's what makes us so recognizable and remarkable. And what I mean by integration is making sure, I'm just going to slip back a second, making sure that all of these different organizations and groups are focused on the right things at the right time. Um, so, and then, of course, you know, you could probably recognize the thing on the left is from The Martian, which we were so excited to get to work with Hollywood on that movie. But on the right, that's astronaut Scott Carpenter um, in 1962. And he's talking um, with President Kennedy in that picture from his uh, telephone aboard the carrier USS Intrepid after he flew on Aurora 7. So um, we have, again, just great historic content and future content. but making sure that we're communicating it is definitely our biggest challenge. So when I think about, I was actually, this, this webinar was really fun for me because it gave me an opportunity to really sit down and think, how do we organize and how do we um, package or bucket um, all of these, this work in a way that we can integrate it? Um, we know we need to integrate, but we, we do it differently depending on the kind of work that it is. And so um, I, I realized we kind of have like three, three to four main areas. The one is the agency campaigns. Um, we'll talk about those. The other one is just amazing significant moments in time. And then the other way is kind of long range planning and replanning. So I want to step through these um, really quickly. Uh, for the agency campaigns perspective, right now, um, at NASA, we have six communications campaigns. Um, one is targeted the Earth right now. One is around the work we're doing on the International Space Station. One is our journey to Mars, which uh, you saw Brian um, present, showed you that graphic, which really encompasses that campaign. There was uh, our technology campaign, our aeronautics. Um, a lot of people forget that NASA is a huge um, researcher and advancer of our aeronautics. Um, and then also our deep space solar system and beyond, um, which Cassini would have been a part of that campaign. So these are the big story buckets. I'm going to focus predominantly on Journey to Mars because that's the one that I'm the most um, in, involved with. But when it comes to integrating a big agency campaign like this, the very first thing that we did is we came up with, you know, what is, our, what is the campaign platform? What is the most basic fundamental story of this campaign? What is our truth statement? And that's where we've got right here on the left, the key messages. The next thing that we um, did as an agency-wide team is come together with, a, the, with some designers and say, you know, what is our brand identifier? What is our hashtag? What are our colors? What are our fonts? Um, and just th this isn't going to be new to anybody in marketing, but just really getting a designer toolkit together. Because as you pr remember from the previous slide, we have multiple people, multiple pro programs um, across state, many states and internationally, which is not uncommon for a, either a major company or a major agency. But making sure that everybody's working from the same creative palette is really important when it comes to being integrated and showing visually um, and in your messaging consistency. Um, 
Then we had uh, uh, our multimedia products. So we basically had a downloadable catalog with all of the products that anybody could download um, for to, to get that product itself, like a poster or something, or to give them kind of something to slip through to spur some creativity um, if they're working on something that, that they're just trying to get some good ideas. And then finally, you'll see in the bottom right um, is what looks like a bunch of green lines across. Well, that's actually um, Opal. We use this system because um, it is not only amazing for calendaring, for making sure that we have all of our moments identified of what's happening on what day, but it helps us tell um, the stories and we can all create and work. I'll show you a little bit more about this, but, but all being on the same calendar in the same system where we can work collaboratively is really key to staying integrated. Um, and then, so you may have seen some of these, maybe not, but with regard to this is kind of the outcome of what happened for the Journey to Mars campaign because um, we had those key messages, we had the color palettes, we had the um, creative style, but I, I, incur I want you to know that almost every single one of these were designed at different centers for in completely different programs. Um, and some of them with, you can see the one up in the top right corner, that's uh, a, a spoof off of the Martian cover of the book which we were allowed to do. We worked with Andy Weir on that one and the publisher. But um, we really had a great um, experience and because we looked so professional and because um, all of the different programs had that same look and feel, it was very easy to make sure that we had a common and consistent brand identity and making sure that we were on the same story. The other way that we um, integrate is around significant moments. For example, if you were alive in America on August 21st, you probably remember the uh, the great cross um, transcontinental solar eclipse, right? And um, we had a lot of planning and work around that, but it was really about one major event. And we were so focused, we were so integrated, every single program, whether you were in this in helio science or not, in this in the sun program or not, you were trained, you were focused, your energies were saying something in social media or putting out some sort of product that attached you or that focused um, your audience on this specific event. And so what ended up happening is all of the rest of NASA kind of went quiet and allowed this one moment to really stand out. Because as I said, we've got so many different programs and amazing things happening across the agency every single day that it's um, it's it's hard. You, things can get lost in the white noise. So sometimes we have to turn the noise down and everywhere else so we can focus on one spot. Um, and then finally, uh, and you know, you can't you can't. We were we were pretty huge. The the agency did a fantastic job. Um, and, you know, what was interesting is we had even the International Space Station team was focused on the solar eclipse. They were looking at it. Um, the aeronautics organization, the, the, air, the air controllers, the, the planes that we have, all of our assets were trained on this. So not only did we do it from a communications perspective, but technically our programs also focused in on this one event. And that's what just made it so, so amazing. Um, and so the whole agency went in for that. And this is an example of, uh, of a screenshot of actually how we did planning inside of Opal, where we had our key, our key messages, some of our social media prepared to go, some of our um, posters that were ready. Um, we planned all of it inside this one tool. And so we were able to work together um, whether it was, you know, sometimes they were Word documents, sometimes they were Instagram posts, but it was all in one place so we could see how this day was going to shape up from, um, from our team's perspective. And then uh, another way that we really plan um, and, and work on integration is through long-range planning. Um, for example, in 2019, uh, we think around uh, late 2019, 
Um, we are planning on uh, launching a mission of back to the moon. Um, and it's not going to have crew on it because it's a test flight. But once we do this successfully, we will be putting crew on, on the next very next launch after it. And so this is called Exploration Mission 1. Yeah, it's two and a half, almost maybe three years away, but we are planning now for it. Um, to the right, you'll see the, the spacecraft Orion, the top right. Um, that's the crew vehicle. And like I said, there won't be crew in this particular one, but we, we're checking it out, understanding the radiation environment, making sure it works great. And then um, at the bottom right, you'll see the Space Launch System rocket. This is the most powerful rocket that we've ever built. It's like on the order of the Saturn, um, but it even has more capability than that. And so um, we, the, their first flight, this will be Exploration Mission 1. And we're, like I said, we're planning for this right now. So one of the things that we're actually working on as we speak is naming it. Because um, we think, explore, you know, something this profound and exciting, maybe Exploration Mission 1 isn't um, the, the catchiest name. So we've, you know, we're in the process of looking back through our enterprises. And we're talking about what, what do we want to call this? Um, we know that it's going to have to be consistent with our, you know, our messaging around deep space and our current policy goals. Um, we definitely know that it needs to be talking about a pioneering spirit, and we're certainly not going just to go back. The idea is to go and to really expand human presence into the solar system. So we know that we want to evoke an idea of a permanent settlement. Um, it's not one mission, it's multiple missions. It's this first test flight, then the next flight test with crew, then the next one, then the next one, it's this buildup. So it's not a one-off. And we wanna make sure it inspires uh, and resonates with the American people, and also that it translates positively across cultures and language. And most importantly, that it communicates the value of the human story. Um, only humans endure, um, not machines. And so we want to make sure that it's got a very, it, it evokes those human emotions. Um, so we're, we're actually, I'm kind of giving you a sneak peek. We're in the process of this right now. Um, the one thing that we already do have is a brand um, identifier. And we're very thoughtful about why we've created it the way we have. Um, and so we find that that really helps us with integration, both internally for the team and then externally that it tells a story in and of itself. So um, <laughs> we are, we do laugh about the fact that, you know, you have to build it first and then you can name it. Uh, that tends to be the case here. Um, and I don't know if that may be the case as a lot of products. And then- Actually, can I, yep. can I actually jump in? Um, sure. I, I thank you so much for giving us this, this sneak peek. I, I've got a question on, and I know some questions will be uh, coming in from the audience as well, but I've got a question. You know, you mentioned Cassini before, um, and now uh, this mission. How does the um, the spacecraft itself complement your storytelling? So, for instance, you know, Cassini, I was reading that it, was, it, it launched back in the 90s and, you know, probably didn't have... Uh, the greatest calendar, well, according to today's cameras, they, they wouldn't be all that great. But but when we launched this new mission, how are the, the cameras and the storytelling capabilities different with this rocket, let's say, versus Cassini and, and, and those programs? You know, I'm going to tell you, is, um, I'm going to give you an answer that's going to probably break your heart. The truth is, um, we really struggle with getting getting the kind of cameras that we want on the vehicle. You have to understand that these, this is such an engineering organization. It is such a technical organization. And every, literally every ounce matters. And so um, we, are, we scramble, we fight from the communications perspective to get in there and say, but we've got to have high resolution cameras. And, and, and in fact, we actually do have some pretty good cameras and we're gonna have great footage for this mission, but they might not necessarily be live because the bandwidth from the moon back to earth 
they're trying to get real time, you know, how is the how is the spacecraft operating? What is the radiation environment? They're doing tests and they need that bandwidth for monitoring the actual system itself. And from an engineering perspective, the the kind of the live shot downlink is is secondary. Yeah. From their, yeah. for, for you know, the way they look at it, they're seeing ones and zeros, and they can see a whole picture out of it. They, the data that they're getting back that's pouring across their screens, they can see what they want to see out of it. It's not an image, but it's they can visualize it. And so sure. um, there's a there's a little push and pull. We definitely, I'm like, I told them, I said, you better promise me that I'm going to see something at least better than the Apollo era. You know, like I cannot. This is going to be difficult. Um, and we will. We'll see some good footage, and we're going to be able to see that Earth rise again, and those images that we haven't seen live, literally for what 40 years. But wow. um, the great imagery will happen when this craft returns. That's when we're going to be able to take off the really high resolution imagery of kind of the surface of the moon and the things like that that we haven't seen in a really long time. So, of course, as the calm person, I want to run in there and be like, I want this thing tricked out with the best cameras, and I want, you know, I want them to be remote control, and I want full bandwidth, and they're kind of like, no, you can't have that. Um, I think they're short-sighted. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. But, um, but yeah, we, we do think about that up front, um, is how do we how do we bring going back to our original mission to make sure that we can connect the world to America's space program? Well, how do we do that? And we know that visually, um, it's so important to have those those iconic images come across. That's a long winded answer, but it's 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 a struggle we're still in the middle of. So I'm kind of passionate about it right now. <laughs> cool. Good. Thank you. That's some real inside baseball right there. Um, but then ultimately, you know, we have to keep in our mind that eventually, you know, at some point we are going to be rolling out the most massive rocket that we've ever seen in our generation. And we are going to launch a new era of human spaceflight, you know, within a couple of years. And we're so excited that it's going to have our brand on it, you know, that we got to actually have input in developing and that we're going to be the ones, the storytellers of this exciting mission. And I cannot wait until this is not a graphic; it's an actual photo. You know, photo. It, it'll be the best day ever. Um, and then the other thing that we really do. So that's like one-off, long-range planning for a big mission. But the other thing that um, we stroke. It's not a struggle, but it's something that we really watch is replanning. For example, we have some events that happen every year and a half, every you know, 17 months, that kind of thing. For example, the Martian New Year. Um, there's a place in Mars, Pennsylvania. It's a it's a town called Mars, Pennsylvania, and um, they celebrate the Martian New Year, um, which occurs about every 687 Earth days. So it's not like, oh, it's February, let's prepare for Martian New Year. You know, it's it's about every 22 months. And um, we love supporting this little town. They make a big deal out of it. And, um, but because we do the Martian New Year every 22 months with them, we wanna make sure we're repurposing materials that we've used before, but always keeping them fresh. Um, so, you know, it, it all it, because we know it's coming, it gives us an opportunity to test new ideas. For example, at the Martian New Year in 2017, and this year, that was one of the first times our team really put together an Instagram story, because it was kind of a new thing that people were doing, and we wanted to give it a try. Um, so because it's the replanning, you can sort of take out what you've done last time, dust it off, freshen it up, see where you can push you know, new technologies or see where something's happening for the first time and kind of reinvigorate your team. And it's also an opportunity to really say, to let people try new things and be creative for the first time and kind of unproven or untested um, technologies or, or methods. Another thing that um, we're looking at replanning a little bit is our partnership with Peanuts. Um, you may or may not know that, but we have NASA has a long history with um, Snoopy. As a matter of fact, our highest award that we can give somebody in NASA 
is an astronaut award that they give to a people of someone that they think has supported human spaceflight, and it's called the Silver Snoopy. But the Silver Snoopy and our relationship with Snoopy has kind of looked the same and been the same for since Apollo. And we're now in communication, talking with the Peanuts organization to say, how can we, how can we make this new? How can we replan this so it means as much and it 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 honors the legacy, but maybe has a freshness to it. So those are some of the kinds of areas where we do some replanning. Real quickly, this is kind of the nuts and bolts. How does our team do it? We really actually do use um, this tool called Opal. It helps us streamline our uh, top communications priorities. It's a shared calendar. It helps us collaborate on events. You saw that we're in that moment in that picture view of how we were planning the um, eclipse. It allows us to create a presentation very quickly out of the tool and inform our leadership of what we're doing. Um, it allows us to access our content. We have a lot of security and firewalls. And so um, what's nice about this is if I get stuck somewhere in a hotel, I can use two authentication to log into it and I can access my content um, remotely, which is really a big deal for us. And again, it allows us to plan and, and also look back in time at what we've done in the past and help us replan um, for long range events. For me um, and for our team, it really helps us turn our agency events into big moments. If we can put, instead of digging through emails and 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 searching through files and having to, we have some big presentations too and big graphics and you know, short of running sticks around or hard drives around, it allows us to upload it and put it all in one place and then work together collaboratively on it. It allows us to really kind of take a very uh, dispersed team across the country and focus in with a lot of energy on one or two major events that are coming up. Um, and we love this because this is the iconic image of the 1960s of, you know, this is a, people working together on one big thing. Um, and if you do look at the, the bottom right, um, this is actually the social media team, some of the social media team um, for the eclipse, and this is the way we're working together now. But in some ways, it's not that different. There's a few more women, a little more diverse, a lot more technology, but it's really everybody kind of working together and looking at the same material. And then the other thing that you can see in the middle there is the nice thing about um, the tool that we use, Opal, is that we're able to um, have collaboration in, in a chat format that happens right inside the moment. So people can go back and forth and talk um, about what what the content says and whether or not they should use it and collaborate right inside their creative. So I think that the biggest thing for us is integration and collaboration um, and really staying on the same page. We think that you know together we just accomplish a lot. And we goof off a lot and have a bunch of fun, but really, truly, teamwork does make the dream work of getting um, people connected to the to the space program. And so um, we just hope that we're blowing everybody's mind all the time, and uh, that we can bring the real emotion, true passion that we have for human spaceflight to um, to the world. And as John F. Kennedy said, who's obviously very iconic here for our agency. A man may die, nations may rise and fall, but an idea lives on, and ideas have endurance without death. And so for us, it's about getting the ideas across, the big ideas that seem kind of far-fetched, but that are possible. So with that, um, I think I'm done with my presentation, and I'd love to take uh, questions or um, turn it over to you. Let me know what's next. Sure. We do have some Thank questions. You. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you so much, Ashley. And um, Brian, actually, there is quite a lot of questions coming through now. So, Brian, are you happy for me to, to jump on to some of the, the questions we've got here? Yes, please. Fantastic. Um, well, Brian, I'm going to 
start off with a, a question for you. It's actually um, coming to understand a little bit more about kind of Opal's um, work that you do. And somebody's asked, um, does Opal integrate with or replace other social media management tools? Um, they've mentioned a few names like Hootsuite, Sprout Social. Um, so could you just give um, the listeners a little bit more understanding on kind of Opal's integration and, and how you work and if you work with or if you are kind of an um, advanced kind of replacement for these tools? Sure. Opal is open architecture. Um, we, we integrate in with um, social publishing platforms like Hootsuite and uh, things like WordPress and Spreadfast. Um, but we we integrate and um, we're we're part of your your stack and we're we're you know, think of us as that orchestration layer um, that that brings everything everything together. It, it allows your teams to collaborate uh, and it is that one kind of source of truth for how your campaign comes together. And it's the I love the example of the of the chalkboard where the uh, the the NASA chalkboard of of 2017 is pretty awesome. Thank you so much, Brian. And, um, I've just got um, a few people asking about, to confirm, the actual Opal website. So it is workwithopal.com. Um, so that is W-O-R-K with W-I-T-H and Opal, that's O-P-A-L.com. So just to let everybody know, I have written that in the question box to everybody so you can take a look at that website as we speak. Just Coming back over to yourself, Ashley, there's um, quite a lot of interest around NASA and trying to understand more about some of your internal um, integration and prioritization. So we have a question here. It's number question two I've got, which is how do you prioritize internal content and share that with your stakeholders who all believe that their content is the highest priority? Um, so could you just give us a little insight into how you kind of prioritize your internal content sharing? That's a really good question. Um, and it probably sounds like uh, somebody who has several stakeholders like we do probably asks it. Um, to, to be um, a little bit blunt, on, on the one hand, we prioritize our content to our stakeholders based on which stakeholder is asking for it. Clearly, if the administration, if the White House or um, a member of Congress that's on one of our committees wants something, we get it to them. I mean, that's a drop drop everything, get it done. But with regard to um, when we get to prioritize it ourselves, we really look at um, what is coming up, what's on the calendar. Um, there are some events that just happen that are going to be a big deal, like the eclipse like a launch, um, it, it's going to be eyes on it whether you want it to be or not, and you always do want it to be. But sometimes we have some dead space. We have time between events. And it's at that point where we really want to focus on, okay, we have a lot of content. What do we promote right now? Um, and what we try to do is we make sure that um, we have themes. Like um, let's say we're talking, uh, trying to prepare for this mission coming up. Well, one of the big things that we're doing across the board is testing. We're doing a lot of testing, and it's across multiple programs and multiple centers. So it'd be very easy to say, "Oh, we did a test over here," and just talk about that test. And then three weeks later, "Oh, we did a test over here," and talk about that test, but not connect them under a banner of the importance of testing and verification for a mission. So uh, sometimes we prioritize based on how much content we have around something and can we lump it all together and make a bigger story out of it. Um, sometimes we prioritize based on um, just what's coming up and we need to make sure that we're talking about this at a certain time. Um, I hope that's answering the question. We, we do have a lot of stakeholders. Sometimes our stakeholders are um, sometimes not, have different uh, differing opinions than the others and so that always gets really interesting of how to thread the, the needle there, um, making sure you're getting the right information out but not upsetting somebody else. Um, but the nice thing is that's kind of, that's the political appointee's job. Um, we really are very, very focused on the public and, um, and making sure that we're just as transparent as possible. I think around transparency, some of our biggest challenges are when there's 
a failure or when something doesn't happen quite as planned. Um, it's from my perspective, it's always exciting to share share with that with people. Look what happens. This wasn't expected. Uh, didn't go the way we thought. Here's what happened. We want to really be open about it. Um, but you know, sometimes that can be a challenge too because we don't always know what happened right at the moment. And so there's a tendency to say, well, don't say anything until we can be absolutely sure. Um, and then that gets that gets really challenging as far as how to prioritize what to say when. Um, I hope I hope that answered the question. Brilliant. Thank you so much. And I've got a, another question come here from Kristen Jones. And I'm going to open this um, up to um, both yourself, Ashley, on maybe a couple of kind of top tips, but also come back to yourself, Brian, on kind of how Opal is you know, helping brands to do this. And the question is um, quite broad, so hopefully we can pin down just a couple of kind of top tips for the listeners. And the question is, how do you ensure continuity and consistency across all of your networks, channels, and accounts? So I know you have suggested earlier, actually, a little bit around how you work with Opal to really streamline um, and ensure that continuity. Um, but Brian and Ashley, is there any kind of further comments there that you want to make around you know, really ensuring and letting these brands know that are really struggling with consistency, um, you know, to how they can really start to bring their business together and start to create those interlinks between those channels and accounts, et cetera? You, my my answer is pretty quick, and and it's um, establishing those behaviors that are collaborative. Um, just ensuring that you're you're meeting and you are uh, facilitating with those stakeholders as much as possible, and that the the lines of communication are open, um, and that that you establish these routines and it could be as simple as, you know, every Monday you have a, um, a strategy session where you all align um, and you just start to build those, those habits and those behaviors. And um, it's, it's probably the best way to cope with, with um, just the craziness that we're all, we're all dealing with. Fantastic. I absolutely Actually, agree with that. I think if you don't mind, I'll just jump in. I, I completely agree with the the behaviors. Um, knowing um, your, I don't want to say chain of command, but in a certain way, knowing knowing your protocols, who needs to see what, when, um, at what point. But I also think it's um, as a part of that, getting getting your truth documents together, your source documents. What are your key messages? What is your brand identifier? What is your look? What what is your big that top level narrative? What are you what story are you trying to tell? I mean, getting that figured out up front and getting buy-in from your entire team. This is what we're trying to tell. This is the emotion we're trying to convey. This is the look that we're going for. And solid, clear goals that everybody can repeat. I mean, in, in everybody on my team has our key messages posted in their, in their um, workstation. Um, and what that really does, I think, is allow people the freedom to create because it's not, it sounds limiting, but what it does is it, you don't have to worry anymore about what am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to do? How is it supposed to look? You know all of that. So you can really start collaborating because you're working off the same page. And then like what Brian said, when you have those behaviors set, it's at this meeting that we're going to talk about these things. It's not just so so freewheeling. There there has to be it's it's a creative process, yes, but there has to be rigor and structure in it. Thanks so much. And you know, a lot of these things when it comes to, you know, pinning out um great content and obviously with your role, there's always that kind of underlying pressure of, you know, goals, KPIs, you know, measurable goals. And we have somebody here asking, you know, within the comms team at NASA, is there any kind of specific measurable goals that you're, you know, constantly, you know, trying to work towards? 
Yeah, they're probably not as rigorous or as um, defined as like we do have metrics. We do watch numbers. We 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 do that. Um, but you know, success looks different depending on the type of event. Um, sometimes you know, some people will say, "Oh my gosh, we did this presentation and how, you know, thousands of people saw it." Okay, but how many people did that actually affect? How many people did it change their life or did they decide they wanted to go do further research or did it make have a better day? You know, so so output and outcome are are kind of always a, a balancing act. You can you can count lots of things, but if you don't know what you're counting them for or what you're trying to achieve, I think it's just a numbers game. So for us, what we really focus on is like, okay, this is a big event coming up. Let's see if we can push our Instagram account to that 1 million mark. Or, you know, let, we, it's almost more short-term goals that we give, we give opportunities to really push towards those things, see what works and see what doesn't work. So we're constantly tweaking and doing some feedback. We do really track how many schools that we visit or students that we talk to because we really want to make sure that we um, are spending the taxpayer dollar wisely and um, are investing in our future, which are our children. So it's really, it's easy to spend those resources on fun, big, splashy outreach stuff. But at the end of the day, it's really getting into the classroom that is probably the most meaningful. So, so some of those things that we know that we're trying to track, we track very closely, but we don't have, we don't have, at least my team, I don't impose, you know, you have to count every hand that you shook or we have to add up however many likes we got. Because I, I find that that has limited, um, that, that gives me limited information, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And I think we've got time for about one, two more questions before we kind of just come to some final thoughts. Um, and any kind of lasting comments from um, both yourself, Ashley, and Brian. And I've just had one kind of other question, and Brian, I'm going to just come over to you um, for this. And someone's asking about kind of the integration of how do you reach out to non-marketing slash communication members um, for content? So working with people outside of those departments around content. Um, and they've asked here, do they have the ability to contribute in Opal, or do the members of the Marcom team collect the stories? So I don't know who wants to jump in here, but I guess it's just looking at, you know, do sure. other teams get involved in this within Opal, and um, or has this happened with other brands? Yeah, absolutely. I can answer that real quick. And Ashley kind of mentioned this before, is that there's a, um, a presentation capability within Opal that's incredibly uh, useful. And, and when I ran my team, I, I ran marketing at, at, in, at Intel for a long time, and I would use that presentation capability to communicate everything we've just done and decided on and approved. You, you can wrap that up into a presentation that you can send to stakeholders both in and outside of Opal. And there's one example of a customer that we have actually that has, um, you know, a lot of celebrities that they are working with, um, you know, their, their Instagram accounts and those types of things where um, everything is planned and orchestrated within Opal and that celebrity then is sent that presentation that's, that's an interactive presentation where they can, they can approve or comment on that particular photo. Let's say it's uh, an Instagram account where they can just approve or, or send that back um, uh, you know, from that presentation so that they are completely comfortable with all the communications going across their Instagram feed. And some of these are pretty finicky celebrities that, that we all know. Uh, and that's, that's how I would answer that question. Um, it's a good question. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I'm just going to quickly finish off with one last question. Um, and that's somebody asking around how do you handle the shift in real time that we see across social? So obviously when it comes to really trying to work content in a real time basis, you know, is there you know, a strategy in place for that and how does this kind of change things and change your approach? Ashley, I'm gonna give that one to you, that's okay. So, 
so is it let me let me re ask the question to make sure I understood it correctly. And um, that is how to keep up with the latest on social media? Yes. So how do you kind of handle the shift in real time on social media? Exactly that. I'll tell you that's that's the million dollar question, right? It it changes so quickly. Once you know, one year this thing is the coolest, the next year nobody uses it anymore. So um one of the things that I do is make sure I'm hiring really young, awesome people um, that, that know social media. Um, and the other thing is that we, we really do watch it. The nice thing about having a, a collaboration tool like this is that we can see how it looks across different um, platforms. So if we want to take the same concept and then we target it, because so, social media at least, generally different channels or different platforms tend to sort of collect their own kind of audience, right? Some are younger channels, some are older channels. Some allow for more discussion, more background. Some are just a quick picture or just a flash, right? So I think the first thing that you have to do is figure out what content are you trying to get out? And then you, you target it toward whatever the audience is. Because if you're targeting something that's to an older audience on a younger platform, you've really messed up. So, but those platforms move, right? Facebook, when I started playing around in Facebook, what was it, 10 years ago or something? I mean, it was just those kids, right? It was really young. Now it's like, that's how I connect with my grandmother. So, um, it, it, you just have to stay on top of it. I don't know what to say. I wish there was a magic answer. I wish I wish somebody would just like put out the social media quarterly of like what's happening on what channels and what to look out for. Because channels will pop up or platforms will pop up and people are using them. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means. And I try to stay really um, on top of it. Um, it's not my personal area of focus, but you really can't do outreach, communication, or marketing without, without it. I... It, Maybe the person who asked the question has a better answer than I do, in which case I'd be happy to listen. I'm, it, it is truly one of the greatest challenges. I will also say that we, we at NASA are really trying to change the way we do business. When I started, it was all about press releases and web stories um, and, and um, long form kind of documents and reports. And now we're, it's like, if you can't get it done in 15 seconds, you're, you know, nobody's going to pay attention, which has its, it has its real downsides sometimes, but we probably spent 90% of our efforts on traditional media, print media, press releases, and just a little bit. And slowly we're growing our social media and kind of put, pulling back on some of our traditional media, which I would, you know, web stories and newspapers and, you know, call outs to reporters. Frankly, most most reporters, most um, media, they've, they've really cut back their science beats, things like that. So we're, we're realizing that we can go direct to our target, which is the general public, which is, the, you know, consumer of, of their information through social media. Um, staying on top of it, uh, what, what's the coolest, latest trend today? That's, that's a constant, constant battle. Thank you so much, Ashley. And uh, a lot of positive comments coming through for today's webinar. Um, Brian, um, any lasting comments before we um, say farewell well, and thank you to everyone listening today? Just thank you so much. And thank you, Ashley. Um, I've had a blast putting this webinar together with you. Um, and, and thank you all for, for joining today. Thank you so much. And again, thank you, Ashley. I don't know if you have any lasting comments, but it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today's webinar. I've loved it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you both. Well, thank you, everybody that is on the webinar today. Um, we're kind of let Brian and Ashley go now. And thank you for their time. I can see a lot of thank yous and fantastic webinars coming through on the chat box, so we really appreciate that. We will be um, getting the recordings and sending them over to Ashley and Brian for approval, and hopefully we'll be able to share those out as well. Um, my name's Haley at Insight Group, and I'm going to let you all go. 
but I hope you get a good chance to recap your learnings today to the team and also get to come and join us on Opal at the Brand Marketing Summit in New York. Have a great day and we'll speak to you and hopefully see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.